Hi everyone, welcome to eLearn Chat, where you always learn something new. Uh, today we've got my good friend and co-host, Leslie Price, the Scot living in England. She is with www.learnappeal.org.uk. You can also get there by going to learnappeal.com. It will redirect you. Great charity. Take a look at it. They do wonderful work and, uh, and make Leslie happy. That's all she wants. She just wants to be happy. So go visit the site and help out because <laughs> really they do good stuff. On the video switcher and mixer, we've got Harold Mugliotti. And we've got a great guest today, a good friend, John Blackman, CEO and CTO of Trivantis. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relay Corporation. Digital learning development, media development, corporate video, management consulting, and more. Visit us at www.relate.com. Thanks. And we are Hello. back. And there he is in that center position of power, John Blackman. Hey, John, how are you? <laughs> very good, very good. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. It's good seeing you. I haven't seen you in about a year. So I'm... I, it's been a while. It's been yeah, because... I think I missed you. Were you at DevLearn? Yes. Yeah, I was at DevLearn. Uh, it, you know, busy time for everyone. So I, I, I didn't get a chance to come over. There were too many I, I, I saw time. you across the room once, and that was about it. And, and we were filming. We were doing a lot of filming and stuff, and, and I must have just missed you there. Uh, on the first day we filmed, and I missed the first part of the filming, so I got there late. And the second day we were just taking pictures a little bit. But, but it's good to see you again, and, and what we were talking pre-show, looks like you guys are doing some fun stuff and keeping things moving. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the one good thing about being in e-learning. I mean, you can do it uh, while social distancing at the same time. So we can all work out of our homes, get everything done we need to do, and it's actually not a bad time to be in this business. I mean, there's a lot of you know, learning that needs to happen over a great distance now that you know, many companies are considering it that weren't doing it before. Yeah, and it's painful. Because a lot of companies yeah. who haven't done it are, are all of a sudden putting three, four, five, ten thousand people out in their homes. And guess what the first problem they just discovered is? Bandwidth. Bandwidth. Oh, Not sure. everybody has sure. good bandwidth. A lot of people don't. And mm. uh, they're finding e-learning sometimes is too big or they've got other problems. They're running videos and it can't get to people. So it's an interesting time for, for the, I'm talking the bigger companies, which have huge call centers or things like that. Uh, they're, they're struggling a little bit because it's hard to get people that are used to being in-house supervised, totally unsupervised, outhouse. No, no pun intended, but um, <laughs> anyway, it's an interesting, it's an interesting world we're living in. Yeah, it's, so, also, so, it's also very, very interesting what's happening out in the places that we support, like in Kenya and mm. uh, Nigeria, because they've got radio, they've got television, and in exactly the same way as here, people say, and if you want more information, go online, but they don't have online, unless you're in a big city, uh, you don't another, have online. And Leslie, there's another interesting fact I read the other day about Africa, because they have malaria there, they have almost no COVID because they take anti-malarial drugs which kill the COVID. They've had almost none. It's really, really interesting. And they said it's probably wow. because of the climate. So I wonder what it's like. South America hasn't had that many. Same thing again. Some areas have the big malaria issues. So interesting. I, that's, that's something they're but talking it is, about right but it now. Is, it is a problem because they yeah. are they are on lockdown yes. and certainly Eric Kamuri has been in touch with me asking if we can get some volunteers to create content for COVID mm. that we can then maybe send out on the SD cards to put on the capsules yeah. so that they can access it offline Interesting. because they simply can't go online. Uh, mm. Not at all. Hmm. Yep. Anyway, well, John. it's it's everywhere. It's not. I mean, we say that, but uh, yeah. my daughter is a school teacher, and the the classes are going online, and she has a lot of her students that don't have any computing or any bandwidth at home, and so oh, they really? are yeah. literally sending buses around with Wi-Fi to the neighborhoods in the area, interesting, and giving yeah. 
they have to give Chromebooks to the students. And so they literally, the, the county has been giving Chromebooks out to the students and then going wow. around on the bus and Wi-Fi and the students will sit in their yeah. home and get Wi-Fi off this bus that's going around. So it's almost becoming like a WiMAX yeah. thing where everybody, you know, the cities are offering the, the WiMAX to everybody. And usually you don't get the best bandwidth, but it's better than nothing. Better than so, nothing. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, John, so what's, school, what's, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say also schools and teachers, um, I don't know what it's like in the United States, but certainly in the UK, you know, 10 years ago, we were really starting to make progress. And then the government said, we're not funding it anymore. Mm. The kids can all be in school. They don't need it. And so the teachers don't necessarily have that experience in no. using it. Yeah, it's a so, movement towards anyway. advancing technology. Yeah, you've got to love the bureaucrats. Yeah. Anyway, hey, John, tell us what's been going on. What's, what's new? I think you, you, you said Scenario VR. Oh, you're doing something fun with Scenario VR. That yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, last it's been quite a while since we've talked. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of new things have come into Scenario VR. Uh, and so uh, with what's going on, uh, especially with what's going on these days, we're trying to have a little fun with it. We're actually going to be creating a, uh, a virtual Easter egg hunt. Uh, and so, and we're going to put it out in the public for everybody to get to so that you, uh, the kids can go on their Easter egg hunt. If they're still sheltering in place, they'll be able to do it. I actually, if you uh, have a moment, I could actually show you what I was just working on today. I, I got a little bit of a late start. I actually started working just to show how fast things can be done. I, uh, I got started working on it today, so <laughs> I'm, uh, not quite done with it. Uh, but I'm going to have it out before the uh, before the day is out, and we'll have a virtual Easter egg hunt. So, Very cool. literally, what I <laughs> what I did is I uh, took the camera out into this is my front yard, by the way, uh, and took a camera out in my front yard. Uh, we have a uh, a few of the new items that are in Scenario VR here over to the side. So we have what are called fixed items. So these are items that are fixed in your field of view. So no matter where I look, you'll see that these items mm -hmm. over here stay in my field of view. So they're mm -hmm. kind of like a heads up display. Yep. So you can, you know, no matter where you turn, you can see that that heads up display is there. I also am showing some variable counts here. So I'm showing you the number of eggs you have. And then as you find the eggs, they pop up in the basket. I also have a timer object, which is another new object, which tracks how much time you've taken. So I only give you 30 seconds per screen. Ah. So on this one, I've got eggs hidden in various areas uh, throughout here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and put it in preview mode to gotta give you an idea of, of what happens here. So you can but do as some I go fun in, gaming now with this. Oh, oh yeah. So, so I'm, it's counting it I down as I, as I, see, excuse me. She's hunting. I said, I saw one, oh, a okay. purple egg. <laughs> yeah. And so as I get an egg, you'll see it disappears and it pops up in the basket. And if I get an egg, another egg pops up in the basket. So That's I just, cool. I go around and look for the eggs. The eggs pop in the basket as I go. It keeps count of the eggs down here. Of course, I'm going to run out of time because <laughs> I, I, I talk too much. <laughs> seven, six, seven. No, I ran out of time. So it's going to switch me to the next one. And now I have eight more eggs in the backyard and 30 seconds more to find those. But you see, it's just kind of a, it's a, a virtual Easter egg hunt. You can play it in the browser. You can also play it in a VR headset using controllers. So uh, lots of cool stuff you can do. So, so when I said you were hopping around, I wasn't kidding. You really are hopping around up there. You're, you're, the, you're the Easter <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> There you go. There you I go. I love it. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to throw, throw a rabbit in here somewhere, kind of an extra credit thing, you know, something like that. You know, that's a uh, lot of fun. That, that's, that's really fun what you're doing. And, and it looks really simple the way it's just working. It's just working. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, you just you, you throw the eggs in. The eggs are, uh, you know, just these individual eggs. And you yep. put actions on those eggs. When you click it, it hides itself, shows <laughs> the found one over here, adds to the count, and then it'll jump to the backyard once you find all eight. That's, That's so we had cool. a little conditional branching there. Very cool. Okay, so if you're yeah. watching right now and you see what this does, he's making it very easy. Yeah, and, and, and I know John, he doesn't do light you know, and mirrors and tricks. I mean, it's usually that easy. So that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I, I, I literally took these pictures about an hour and a half ago and then just started putting this together real quickly. So uh, nice. it doesn't take much to put it together, yeah. Yeah, and I don't smile cool that stuff. much when I see software. It's like, yeah, what now? Sure, whatever. This is cool. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, it's just, it was just fun. Uh, one of a, one of our staff came up with the idea to do it. I said, all right, I got to do it really quick because I have to have it ready for this weekend. So Nice. But that's uh, actually, yeah. when you think about it, when you think about it, with, with especially with younger children, that actually also helps them 
gain skills about how to use a mouse or how to use their fingers or on screen. Yep. So it's not, yes, it's an Easter egg hunt, but you're also actually helping people learn how to do things, not just find the Easter egg, if that makes sense. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do, do you have any programs uh, for, for school kids and stuff like that where they could learn how to do this and actually create some of their own games? I, you know, I, I, I don't have anything particularly for school kids, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I have uh, some video walkthroughs of how to do things. So certainly, yeah, uh, we, and we offer things, you know, discounts to schools and so forth as well. Cause that'd be cool because, you know, especially in today's day and age where the kids are pretty darn bright with, with computers and they're pretty bright with gaming and, and VR. I, I could see this as being a great way to teach kids, you know, the basics of the fundamentals of, of VR and have them create games like this. I mean, like you said, you you did this in about an hour, hour and a half, and it's pretty impressive. It looks it looks polished, and it looks like wow, that's cool. It's easy. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Imagine uh, teaching kids also, variables. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, another thing I just wanted to show. Now this is uh, our test environment here. I wanted to show uh, some of the new stuff that we're working on uh, that we will have coming uh, shortly. Uh, and this is uh, 3D object support. So. Uh, Kind of a cool stuff. So we have uh, 3D objects, and these are full, fully rendered 3D objects that you can now put into uh, Scenario VR. You can, you know, rotate them and put them at any angle. Uh, and those 3D objects can also contain animations. So, for instance, this is a uh, breather mask, and it has a built-in animation on it. That animation actually shows the blow up the exploded view. So within Scenario VR, you can actually call out that animation. So I've actually set that animation. Uh, in into here, you can actually call out that animation, right? It, that that's in there, mm -hmm. and you can play that animation. I'm actually doing that on uh, on this button right here. So on here, I have an action. If I click on that, I'm actually going to animate that with that 3D model animation. So if you want to see what that looks like again, yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. So here 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 is that uh, that mask. When I click on animate, it plays the animation. It goes out. I can actually stop that animation at any point. I can spin it. I can look at the look at it. As it goes through, stop it again, then begin the animation again. I can actually go through and, and animate it, spin it, take a look at it as it animates. Very, very cool stuff that you can do. Very powerful also with, with 3D objects. So we'll be actually pulling in a library of, of built-in 3D objects with animations in as well. But as you can imagine, I mean, so here you're having to get your, get your fitness on. <laughs> you have this little guy in here uh, kind of show you that so there's an animation built into this 3d object here mm -hmm. we can spin it around and look at it that's nice oh yeah it's amazing this is uh if you've ever seen the uh the movie with groot in it here's uh here's the groot character getting a little dance on uh -huh. so these are all little built-in animations and they're all part of the 3d world right so this is something that is in you know it, it reacts to the 3d world it'll work inside of a vr helmet as well so as long as you have standard uh 3d objects created by any 3D tool, they'll work here. Correct. It, we use what's called the GLB format. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, the GLB is a open standard format. Uh, most tools will output GLB these days, and it yeah. gives you a single file that contains all of the textures, all of the, uh, the contents themselves, as well as the animations all built into a single file. So we'll accept GLB files and allow you to put those in. That's really nice. Yeah. I'm just cool looking stuff. at I'm looking at that dancing there, and I'm thinking, oh, you could use that to teach people how to do Scottish country dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yes, what you a could. lot of you know, we learned it. We learned it at school, but so many people, and they still do it at you know at big weddings or at big you know um, events in Scotland. You'll still get. Scottish country dancing. So like, even when my daughter got married, even though she was married in England, she had a very Scottish wedding. And I was busy trying to teach her and her, um, her then to be husband, how to do Scottish country dancing, <laughs> but you could do it on that. <laughs> now, Leslie, you've met Absolutely. John before, right? On the show? Yes. On the show. You've never met him in person? Because he's always at I learning tech. I don't know. Tech. I don't know if we met it. We met it. We maybe we might have met at learning technologies. I'm yeah. obviously at learning technologies. <laughs> yeah, when we were there yes. last I'm year, there. we saw we saw John at learning technologies. He had a really nice yes. booth out there, and it was, yeah. it, it was fun. He wasn't too far from from where the Learn Appeal booth was. It was like he was in the middle, yeah. so almost straight down where, where you guys were. Yeah, we 
Yeah, we probably met at learning technologies, but to be honest, I meet so many but learning technologies, uh, yeah. as you know, Rick, and as you know, John, it's huge and it's incredibly busy. <laughs> very, very, yeah. very. Yeah, busy. that it is. You know, you guys are lucky you had it this year because the quarantine didn't happen for another month and a half, basically. So uh, no. And, no, you, and you know that, that where they have the learning technology, that is now a 4,000 bed hospital. I know. <laughs> where they wow. have that yeah. show. That's amazing. Yeah, I thought uh, I told you that. I thought I told you that, Rick. It's now yes. what they call the Nightingale. Yeah. So where you walked in, where you walked in the front door. Yeah. Um, that, you know, over above that now, it doesn't say Excel anymore. It says NHS Nightingale. Hmm. Wow. They're not gonna. They're not gonna keep that permanently. I hope. I hope they. They eventually no, no, go no, back to. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think, if I recall correctly, John has some Scottish in him. I, I do. I do. Yeah, you Absolutely. do. That's what I thought. So you guys have that in common. <laughs> I think we maybe one day we should get John to do it on some sort of dance. That would be fun. But another time. <laughs> another really time. Another that. show. Not going to make for very good video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so that's really neat though, all, all the stuff that you guys have been adding to to the scenario vr it, it, it's interesting because it's becoming almost like like you said you're getting almost to uh the point of being able to do much more gaming kind of stuff if people want to create that but also with the 3d objects if people can do more when I mean, there's a, so many 3d objects but if people are creating 3d objects that gives you a whole mess more types of training you can do. Oh, exactly. And and we're going to go even farther with it. I mean, we'll eventually have, you'll be able to pick 3D objects up, look at them in your hands, spin them around, look at different areas. You'll be able to place them in areas, so That's you'll cool. be able to accumulate them. Uh, you can imagine factory floor simulations, how that would help with that. I mean, there's a lot of and, areas and we're going And you don't specifically need goggles either, either for it, do you? No, no, you can do, yeah. and that's the beauty. You can do it in the browser or you can do it in goggles you can actually even do it with a cardboard headset and a phone i mean so yeah, there's lots you of were showing ways how to, the to thing was that. moving just right here on on the internet and i was going that's pretty cool uh, yeah i mean so. I, what i was thinking was when that when that mask was coming to bits i was thinking now to me you know being a bit of a gadget person i like to see how things work you know, when I get something home, I'm all, you know, my problem is I, I want to take it apart to mm. just see how it works. And what I liked about that with the mask was the way that all the bits kind of came out together. So you, you could then think, oh, and that bit goes there and that bit goes there. And I can, you know, how, how does it all work? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, exactly. And you can see when you get out that you can zoom in on a certain part and see exactly what that part does and how it fits in exactly. So there's there's so much more to it now when you have this full 3D build. Yeah. You know, I had a dad like that. Every time I got a really cool toy, like once I got a helicopter that was like, I don't know, about a foot and a half long with moving parts when I was about nine, maybe eight. It was the coolest thing ever. My dad got it and broke it. I was like, oh, he took everything <laughs> apart. <laughs> It was like, and then couldn't put it back together. Couldn't put it, it back like, together. Two extra, two extra screws sitting down there. How'd those screws was, get there? I don't he know. He was an engineer at heart. I mean, he he built a lot. He built speaker systems. He did all sorts of stuff. But when he gave him toys, it was like, oh no, he's gonna break. Yep, he broke it. Yeah. We had an IBM just think electric. What you could do, just think what you could do with Lego, John. Oh, Lego. How to build all these Lego kits? There you go. That There's would be another fun, right? use for it. Yeah, that would, doubt, be fun. Without a doubt. that would be fun because Lego, some of those Lego things are really complex and yeah. it's amazing how they put them together. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's limitless. It really is, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, without a doubt. But, so what do people, what do think of the, can't speak, what do people think when they get into Scenario VR and start actually building things? Are, are they kind of blown away? Yeah, the, the, you know, most people's impression of, you know, creating VR is that it's going to be, you know, super expensive, very hard to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, and it, you know, and, and, and used people's to be. mindset, they just truly believe that going in. And so yeah. they, they come in here and they really can't even imagine that they can actually create that easily. That, you know, you just take a 360 camera, film your scene, and then just drop some things in, set some actions to it. So it, it, it it's the, the biggest challenge, I think, here is to let people understand how easy it is actually to do, that you can create it yourself. <clears throat> Yeah, that's really neat. Now, you said you're also working on some new updates to or a new beta for Lectora coming up soon. That's right. 
That's right. In the, in the next few days, uh, we're going to have a new beta out for Lectora as well. Uh, beta for Lectora 19. And uh, new feature coming out is going to be Timeline, which I know that's a big ah. feature for a lot of people. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be putting in some Timeline. You'll be able to set up timed actions along the bottom, You know, set up uh, pages to have timeouts and, and do things based upon that. So lots of interesting things there. We're going to be putting in XLIF support as well. We have a, a lot of new features involving you know, audio and how things work. So a lot of good now, things coming now, what's, up, uh, what's and we have an open sign up for the beta going as well. Now, what's XLIFT? XLIF. XLIF is a translation. Oh, XLIF. Uh, I'm sorry. XLIF. Yeah. So it's a it's a standard translation format. Uh, the good and bad thing about Lectora have been in, been out so long. Lectora had its own translation format before XLIF mm -hmm. existed, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, we're now going through and uh, updating and putting in XLIF support as well, so that you'll be able to use uh, XLIF, which is much more standard. Yep. No, I thought you said X lift at first. I go X lift. What's that one? Because uh, there's so many acronyms, yeah. so many things. I was going. I don't know that one. No, I've heard of right? X lift. Yep. That's cool. Well, that's nice. So that's going to make it just more standard, a little bit easier for 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 that to happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's kind of the, the timeline, timeline is, is, is going to be exciting. Looking for that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting because the only thing I think that was ever missing from from Lectora and and. and it, you know, you and I talked about this in the past, and I, I've been on the advisory board in the past with with Lector, and I so I know this is in the works for years. I wasn't sure when it would come out, and it's a big it's a big come out because it's a lot of work to to change the oh, architecture yeah. internally, and but the timeline gives you that much more control over everything, right? Which is right. which is neat. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because you know Lector was developed what about early two thousands. No, I started working on it in 1999. 99. And, you know, there yeah. weren't that many timeline things back then. In fact, there were none. Right. Uh, right, exactly. And and look how things have changed now. And, you know, in the old days, trying to teach someone how to use a timeline was painful. Nobody knew it. Nobody did video editing. It was just very difficult for people. And now you're starting to see more and more and more of it. And um, it's become more commonplace, especially with, with the, the younger people getting into the field and stuff they're used to at least doing some video editing or other things. So they'll, they'll really take advantage of features like Timeline in Lectora. And um, I think that'll be cool. I can't yeah. wait to see oh, that yeah, one. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's good. Do you have a demo of that? Uh, I, I do, but I have an older demo. I could, let me just give me a moment here. Talk amongst okay. yourselves for a moment here. This is, this is by the way, not <laughs> rehearsed. That just really came, came into my mind. Oh, I'd love to see it. Uh, <clears throat> But you know, Rick, yeah. you're there talking about young people coming into the industry. Yeah. An awful lot of young people don't even know that our industry exists. That's true. You'd be surprised. We don't even know it exists half the time. Surprised. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but but an awful lot of you know, and yet it's one of the fastest growing industries worldwide. Yeah, but, and it's and funny if you look at you know whenever you fill out a form and it, it says yeah, and if you fill out a form on almost anywhere it says what industry are you in, you'll never find anything like multimedia, e-learning, digital. Le no, it's not even there. You can't even find Photoshop. No. Nothing. It's just you either do this or yeah. that, but there's nothing that encompasses like we do in many cases. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, go ahead and share screen again. Okay, um, so here we have a uh, template, a course template. This is one of our standard course templates that come in. We're also updating all of our course templates, so we're going to have all new course templates for you as well. But this is one of our existing course templates. Uh, and as you can see, this is an early build, so I don't have uh, even what's the latest that's going to go out on beta. But uh, you'll see down at the bottom, you actually have a, a, a timeline and a way to add in timed events. When you add those timed events in, i got to get this little screen out of the way. Uh, when you add those in, you have the ability to, to bring it up and look at the events that are on there. You have uh, actions tied to those events. You can tie in anything on those events. So you can show, hide, toggle the show, hide of any object within there. So you can actually go through and you know pick pick whatever it is you want, and you can just toggle the show, hide there, and then you know add as many multiple actions, as many conditions as you want based upon those, you know. Simply going through and selecting a new time, you can add new actions in there, and there, there's your new action, and you can add those in as well. So you can set up all your timed actions on your page uh, to go in there as well. So 
uh, lots of ways to work with the timed actions. This, of course, this is definitely an earlier build. They have a very different look to it down here. Okay. Uh, That's nice, though. But, but yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you can easily just, you know, move your action around and, and, and set it up for any time. That's cool. And that, of course, works with yeah. the transitions and everything else, I imagine. So you could bring things sure. in whenever you need. Right. Yeah. You pop them in and it'll transition in. It'll fly in. You can have it fly in from any side, transition, you know, using any of the standard transitions right. that are in Lectora. You know, all, all of that still applies. So, yes, you can do all of that as well. Cool. That's kind of neat. And that's, so, that's, uh, what people, that's what people don't appreciate, that you can actually, you don't need to be, you know, a highly experienced video editor with filming everything on the go all the time mm -hmm. and making sure it's exactly right to the second to be able to do that kind of timeline. Sure. Exactly. Uh, some of the other things we have is uh, fully, fully integrated Scenario VR content. So, uh, you know, we talk about mm -hmm. the fact that Scenario VR can be run on the web. Uh, so we have now have a Scenario VR object, a Scenario object. So any page within your uh, title can be a Scenario VR scenario, uh, and it will talk back and forth. So the score of the scenario will be told to Lectora, and you can operate on that as a variable. You can do things on done so that inside a scenario VR, when you say, when you throw a done action, a complete action, mm -hmm. Lectora will receive that complete action. And then you can go to the next page or do something based upon that. So it passes information back and forth to scenario VR and actually interoperates with it. So you have that scenario VR object in there as well. Very nice. Yeah. And here I yeah, thought you stuff. were just, when they promoted you to the CEO, you just sat around scratching yourself and doing not much of anything. Man, you are just, <laughs> you're cranking. We're, we're keeping busy. We're yeah, keeping busy. Yeah, you are. You are. I love this. This is good. <laughs> yeah. He's hiding uh, Easter eggs. Well, what no, I, I heard that John, yes. would, you know, and by the way, congratulations, but John got promoted to CEO, and I was going, oh, man, don't mess with the CTO guy. He's good. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you, know, you get a whole mess more headaches when you're the CEO, but... Uh, no, you, you guys are doing some nice stuff. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been really good. And, you know, it, now's the time to go, you know, pedal to the metal on this kind of thing because the world needs it now. Uh, you, now is you know, the time. It's, it's interesting, but, but we do. Boy, do we. Um, yeah. Now, if only you could come out with a sanity meter, something that just makes you not insane anymore. That would, you know, you know <laughs> we got to develop something. Just press a button and now I'm back to normal. Thank you. Um, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? But anyway, yeah, That would be nice. We're not there yet. But, but this is nice. You're well, really my, doing my some. Title, some... But for my title, John, I'm a CCB. Okay, CCB. what's a CCB? You work out what? Chief Cook and Bottle, bottle Washer. Off. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, there you go. That's a CCBW. Pretty much everything. That's a CCBW. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I would imagine from what you're from what you're describing <laughs> and the way you're actually using the software, um, that that title might fit you as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think it does. I think it does. Well, John, John, even though he was CTO, he's always been involved in in design coding. He and I think like most good programmers and engi engineers, he doesn't want to give up that side of it. And tell me if I'm wrong, John, because you you do like coding. In fact, didn't you code oh, yeah. a lot of scenario VR on your own? It was like your sure. baby. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I it, I find it hard to get away from it. I really still it is my passion. It's what I enjoy doing. Yeah, I like doing code. I like doing design. And so I, I try to stay as close as I can. It's not as much as I'd like to these days, but it's still so what, I'm somewhat you, in there. Just out of curiosity, we'll just geek out for one minute. I don't want to scare everybody away. What did you code Scenario VR in? Is that C++ or something else? Uh, no, no. So it's all Java on the back end and Java. JavaScript on the front end using the Vue framework. Yep. Uh, the, uh, the 3D uh, manipulation is done through something called 3JS. That's a framework for uh, manipulating things in 3D space. Hmm. Uh, and then all of the... Uh, all of the headset routines are done in Unity. So we actually use oh, Unity. Uh, okay. Unity and write apps for all the different headsets. So uh, it's a combination of several different things. Yeah, that's a lot. And that's a lot of programming in any of those because Java is similar to C, C++. It's a lot of work. Um, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's very nice what you're doing. And I'm glad you're sharing that with us today because it's always fun to see what, what you guys are up to and, and see you know where the products are going. And it's nice to know that, that they haven't stayed and that you're still involved. So uh, I'm glad to see and hear that. 
Now, it's what cool. we want now, the other thing we want to know, John, is are you really sitting outside and are mm. these trees really <laughs> moving <laughs> in the breeze? <laughs> I am really sitting outside. See, this is this is really the outside. I am. Uh, we can actually walk around. <laughs> this is my backyard. Hold on. We can we can take a little walk. You thought he was in John VR, go. right? <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, this is well, not, see, this is not a like, you know, uh, virtual the, background. You know, I can see, I can see the, the leaves, you know, moving, and I could see water <laughs> rippling in the background, and I'm thinking, <laughs> is he really there, or is he living in a virtual <laughs> world? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's been we, tough. We, fortunately, we are based in South Florida, so we do get some nice weather most of the year. So, Are, are you pretty warm yeah. right now? Yeah, it's actually very warm. I mean, it's it, it's almost too warm today, but... Really? I'm sitting in okay. the shade, so it's not so bad. Yeah, we walked into the office today. It was freezing. Well, not freezing, but it was 58 degrees. It's like, what? The heat didn't come on. <laughs> so, oh. and, we, and it's raining outside. So it's like, oh, man, it's not too bad. It's, but it's like, yeah. eh, it's a little cooler than you want when you're sitting. Uh, I don't, moving yeah. I don't know what it's. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know temperatures in Fahrenheit, but it's uh, yesterday in where I live in South Oxfordshire, it was 24 degrees. And my the central heating 50s. in the house is now off, off yeah. for the whole, oh, yeah. you know, that's it, off for the whole summer now. Huh. Yeah, that's like 50 yeah. degrees, maybe, something like that. Oh, no, yeah, 24 warm. degrees, it's like about 70. It's it's about about 70. Yeah, it's oh, 75. 24, I'm sorry, I'm thinking 12. Uh, yeah. No, okay. Oh, yeah, that is pretty warm. That's pleasant. You're, you're warmer than we are here. We're only going to be, we're probably going to be about 20 degrees today here. In, in well, you should be right outside now. too, it's, Leslie. It's, yeah, it sounds like yeah, it's a no, nice day. But I'm, in, but I'm inside. <laughs> I'm inside doing this show. <laughs> she has a lovely. She has a lovely house there. She has good views of the outside. Yeah, Rick, Rick, Rick's visited. Rick has visited. Yeah, last year we got to we got to visit with her, and it was fun. It was a, she she remodeled that whole thing. It was beautiful what she did, and um, and it just it's got very bright windows. You know, it's just it's nice. It's a nice area. And, and like Rick, so he says, we went on the 5,000-year-old Ridgeway, one of road. the first yep, roads in, right. in, in England. One, yeah, the oldest route in the oldest route in England, one of the oldest routes in Europe. <laughs> so when you next in, when you next come to learning technologies, you'll have to come visit, and then you'll be able to walk in the paths of the Neolithic people long before the Romans arrived. And, and we probably would have walked longer, but it was pouring the day before, so it was kind of muddy <laughs> when we went. But other than that, it was yeah. pretty cool. <clears throat> it was a beautiful yeah. day when we went out there. Oh, no, wait, it was raining that day in the morning. Uh, yeah. when the we morning. Went to see Almost you. every day. It's, it Most is every day, I mean, yeah. You know. <laughs> I wish we had more rain. But we have been getting a lot of in rain. In Scotland, here, so. yes. Not, not quite as bad in England. Yeah. In Scotland, uh, we call it drich. Yeah. yeah, which I think in the U.S. Drich. we call yuck. It's about the same, yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, John, it's been a pleasure seeing you again. Good luck on everything you guys are doing and on the new releases. And hey, on that Easter egg hunt, that'll be fun. And uh, uh, it'll be yeah. out soon. That's cool. And yeah. um, I'll look. I'll look for the link, and I'll I'll let my daughter know because my daughter is a primary school teacher, and All so right. she still keeps in touch with a. A lot of the kids, even though it's school holidays, yep. she still keeps in touch with the with the kids and their parents. Well, that's right. This week has been, um, I guess, spring break for a lot of kids. A lot of people are off right now, so that's sort of interesting. Oh, the, the, in the UK, they shut the schools down two weeks early. Yeah, and same here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're shut down at least through end of April, and they're talking end of May. I feel sorry for the parents who have little kids yeah. now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not fun. But anyway, John, hope, no. hopefully next time we see you, it'll be outside of our prisons and back in the uh, real world. <laughs> so, that sounds like a plan. Let's hey, have go, a good one. That. And we will post this yeah. out later today and, and put links on so people can go and, and take a look at the products. So okay, great. good job as always, John. Okay. Take care. Okay. And if you're watching the show, please again. visit uh, uh, triventus.com. It's, it's down below on the show notes and take a look at some of these products. Uh, I think you'll enjoy. Have a good one, everyone. We will see you next week on eLearn Chat. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.